And this is my list of the top 12 neighborhoods to live in in Washington, D.C. And one more note, towards the end, we'll have an honorable mention as well, which will be fun to check out. So please stay tuned till the end. Here's my top 12 best neighborhoods to live in in Washington, D.C. Number 12, Bloomingdale. Once called Washington, D.C.'s first suburb, it has had a huge spike in growth since the year 2000, mostly consisting of Victorian era homes around 1900. It's got a very quiet, small town feel. There are a lot of great restaurants, and very small community. Number 11, Brooklyn. Home to many churches, including the Basilica of the National Shrine, which is a Franciscan monastery, and the Catholic University of America. Brooklyn has gotten the nickname Little Rome. It's a very quiet area with many locally owned shops and unique restaurants. It has a really great neighborhood feel as well as really great art scene, uh, arts and theater and dance, making this neighborhood quiet but still with a ton of things to do to enrich your daily life. Number 10, Woodley Park. Woodley Park is a very quiet neighborhood where it feels secluded. You can see a lot of stately homes and manicured lawns, but you do not feel cut off from the rest of DC. It's quite easy to get in and around Woodley Park and out to other places. Another highlight of Woodley Park is the National Zoo, which adds to its quiet, calm, park-like feel. Number nine, Foggy Bottom. With both the Watergate and the Kennedy Center part of Foggy Bottom, you can see how it made the list. Not only that, you're next to everything on the National Mall that you could want, very easy to get to DuPont or Georgetown, you're along the waterfront, so tons of great options of where to go from there. It feels a bit like a bustling city, but much calmer than, than a lot of the neighboring neighborhoods. The Southwest Waterfront in DC, home to DC's famous wharf. There are a ton of things to do. It feels more urban. However, it's quieter than most parts of downtown. There is a metro line and walking distance to the National Mall, so tons you can do there as well. Home to DC's famous wharf, which has been expanded greatly so that you can actually use the Southwest waterfront. This neighborhood has tons of condos and co-ops, so some reasonably priced options here since most are not going to be single family family homes. Number seven, Chevy Chase. This is a very large neighborhood on the border of Maryland, has a huge range of types of homes. Most have a fair amount of actual land attached to them, a lot of single family homes. It will be on the more expensive side due to the location and also, like I said, the size of the properties. Very nicely taken care of neighborhood. Number six, DuPont Circle. This iconic neighborhood is home to many lively businesses, restaurants, clubs, bookstores, and other retail. While it's got a long storied past and is already incredibly popular and iconic, they're planning to spend $25 million to transform the public areas of DuPont Circle over the upcoming years. And this neighborhood is just blocks away from downtown DC and Embassy Row on Massachusetts Avenue, home to a good mix of condos and row homes. So you'll have your choice of style of residence. Number five, Adams Morgan. This part of DC is truly very diverse multiculturally, has been for a very long time. Along 18th Street Northwest and Columbia Road, there's about a mile full of restaurants, bars, and shopping through Adams Morgan, which it is, there's a lot to explore in Adams Morgan and always something to do. It's probably one of the most upbeat and trendy neighborhoods and has been for a long, long time. Number four, Georgetown. Georgetown is really its own unique place off to the side of the rest of DC. It's been developed in a different way. A long time ago when the Metro was coming in, Georgetown refused to have a line because they didn't want to affect the feel and the charm of the neighborhood. So there is no Metro here. Tons of shops and restaurants along M Street. So definitely a destination for other people in DC or Northern Virginia to go shopping or to go out at night and um, living here, you can have all of this wonderful things to do outside your doorstep. This neighborhood is mostly going to be older Victorian row homes, but they do have condos now along the waterfront. And then we have our honorable mention, 
So what we have so far is a nice spread of neighborhoods throughout DC, mostly Northwest. We have one Northeast, Southwest waterfront. But what often gets overlooked is the other side of the Anacostia. With Northwest DC being so well established, we don't often get to take a look at what we have south of the Anacostia. So I thought it was important to give a shout out to the top neighborhood across the Anacostia River. Located along Pennsylvania Avenue, just a short while after you cross over the John Philip Sousa Bridge and south of Fort Circle Park near Fort Davis Park. This neighborhood has a lot to do although it's a very quiet neighborhood full of single-family homes for the most part and there's a lot more coming as they are now transforming a long-standing community retail center the shops at Penn Branch into an updated vibrant mixed-use space including new residences number three Mount Pleasant now this is a neighborhood where I constantly hear from people that they would like to live it's a quiet residential neighborhood the housing prices aren't quite what you see they're a little less expensive than what you might see in like Adams Morgan and DuPont nearby but you're still walking distance to all you have in Adams Morgan and there's a lot of local restaurants and retail shopping in Mount Pleasant as well. One thing I like about Mount Pleasant is that it's hilly. You might not like this in the winter however DC does tend to clean their streets pretty quickly but it adds to the views and it's very nice it's near Rock Creek Park as well. Number two Calorama Heights. It's no surprise that this would come in high on a list of best neighborhoods to live in DC as both Ivanka Trump and Barack Obama picked to rent their very large homes in this neighborhood. It's full of incredible homes and estates. You'll notice in these pictures, most of them have parking, which is a rarity in DC. Full yard, single family homes. Definitely a different caliber in this community. This is not the least expensive places to live in DC, but this neighborhood, Calorama, is right next to DuPont and right next to Embassy Row along Massachusetts Avenue. So very easy to get to Georgetown from here and also to DuPont or as Morgan or north to Maryland. So a lot to do from here and you still have a great safe quiet neighborhood feel. Certainly got a lot of security here with some of the residents in place. And number one, Capitol Hill. This is up the hill behind the Capitol. Very flat, clean layout, easy to get around in. This tops off the list at number one for a couple of reasons. One being, I mean, come on, Capitol Hill. DC, nation's capital. It's right behind the capital. And number two, you've got a ton of great things to do between Eastern Market, 8th Street, and everything you have along Pennsylvania Avenue. Having lived here, I can say that you truly feel like you're in the suburbs, but then you walk a block and everything you could possibly want in a bustling city is there. Very well designed and organized. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked my list and agree with my choices, at least somewhat. I know there's a different best neighborhood for every individual. Please feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you're looking for the right neighborhood to live in in D.C., feel free to reach out. Give me a call. I'm happy to help you find the best place for you to live in D.C. And as always, please do like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. I've got tons more planned for you.